Yeah, see you Saturday. Yeah. than before and this is a Thursday night vlog uh, for December 10th so we have a lot more of these rides uh, and it's all all season now so we'll be able to do the Christmas lights I was going to do, take them on the Christmas lights, but uh, I'm not going to do that today. Man, I'm a bit tired. I'll let this guy go. Courtesy matters when you're driving. I can only do 20 kilometers an hour on these roads. These other guys want to go a lot faster, so take a few seconds and let them go. But I like this time of year because you've got the, the Christmas lights. I fixed up my gloves. I've got two layers that are, that's working very well. And my fingertips aren't freezing. Increased traffic though, uh, I have to stop. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. And these roads, uh, sticking to 22 kilometers an hour, that's going to be sufficient for here. And I'll open up more when I uh, get on to Victoria Park onto the main road. Yeah, so it looks like uh, well, back in the 1930s, in terms of history, uh, things, events are cyclical. They go in circles. History does repeat itself. And so basically, we are back in the 1930s with the reemergence of uh, eugenics. Eugenics is the basis for genetics, and the view is is that everything, including behavior. is genetically oriented. So in other words, you're born with these behaviors. And because you're born with these behaviors, these things are permanent, uh, you can't uh, re-educate people. So the only way to deal with the, uh, the genetic problem is elimination. And this is where they come up with the term final solution. To, re to, read the to rid the world and improve the world, of its social problems that are genetically based, you have to, to eliminate the genetic defects that cause the social problems. And these people will be a ske scheduled for elimination. Yet, ironically enough, the way the system works is the people who vote in the very people who are to eliminate them are told lies that they believe, that they're there to solve the problem, they're going to help people out. <laughs> However, that's very far from the reality. The reality of the situation is they're going to be there to eliminate these people. These people are going to be, well, sent to death camps. And in the meantime, they'll be able to they'll, they'll work them as slaves. This is the whole system of, of, of the uh, Ubermenschen and the, and the Untermenschen. The Superman and the subhuman man. And as I said, Hitler comes in to all of this.
as a bit player. He, he, he comes in at the end of all of this. Many people assume that Hitler was there from the beginning, but he wasn't. He comes in to sort of at the crest of everything and brings forward, the, brings, brings forward in, on a large, large scale this whole plan to eliminate people. And again, it's this eugenics program. And one of the key people who were there at the time of Hitler was George Soros. And he sent his own people, the Jewish people, to the death camps. He was one of the informants. And he did so because he believed the Nazi stories that these people were genetically defective and it was his duty to help get rid of them. This is how he was improving society. And the, 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 the Nazi view, the eugenics view, is not, was not restricted to the Nazis. And the thing is, even though they were the Nazis themselves, the Nazis were very, were very popular in the United States. And now they're well hidden within society. So even if you, 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 there, there were Nazis beside you, you wouldn't necessarily know it uh, because they're well hidden, they're well integrated within society, so you don't actually know that they're there. These are they talk about the private discussions. People have a public perspe per perspective that they talk about and they share, their public opinion, but then they have a, a private opinion, opinions that are only shared amongst certain people, the appropriate circles. Outside of these appropriate circles, they, the, the, the true nature of the person is often hidden. But oh, you can, if you're observant enough, watch and find the true nature of the person. Because the true nature is hard to hide and it can't be hidden all the time, so it's hidden bits, bits and pieces. If you're observant enough, you can find these bits and pieces all over the place. Put the puzzle together, and you figure out who the person is, in terms of the reality of the person. And with good throttle control, I'm up to 40, 40 kilometers an hour. 40, uh, we have 40 kilometers an hour. And then this actually contains a lot of bumps, so you have to take your, your, your finger off the throttle. And this is where it gets a little complicated. I realize I have to start yelling now because uh, the wind is picking up to a point because I'm riding that it swamps the microphone and so I have to speak louder in order to be here in order to be heard here so these are things I'm going to have to learn as I go along now people are going a lot faster than I am I'm only doing 10 kilometers under the speed limit yeah, but yet people are going a lot faster. situation that's going on now in terms of the uh, 
where we are in history is a very dangerous one. This is where a lot of people could end up getting very hurt and die. And a lot of death. And yet, people, just like back in 1930, elected Hitler. Hitler, what we don't realize, is elected. Hitler was there by choice, and I'm seeing this again and again and again. People are not, well, because people like Lionel LeBron, who says, you know, history would be a wonderful thing if only it were true, his perspective tells a lot of people who cares about history. But as you stop learning about history, you don't think it's only for those who don't necessarily care about things, but it's, uh, you know, all fiction. This is where you get situations where, well, if you're not bothering to learn about history, then there's no point in doing anything. And so people forget history because they're not learning it. So you get phrases like, oh, that was before I was born, you know. And so, it's, there is no longer history, but rather a sort of a relationship to, to how, to when you were born. It's a personal connection and non-connection. I would say a personal disconnect. you have no, no connection to history. Your knowledge of history, your understanding of history, is so insignificant that it's, it, 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 functionally it doesn't exist. because there's no connection to history. There's no understanding of history. So mistakes made in history go unnoticed. And so do the solutions. So if you're a person who is anti-war, wants less violence in society, how do you prevent people who are popular? You know they're saying the right thing, but you know behind the scenes that they're actually talking about food talking about more violence. How do you prevent them from getting elected when they're so popular? How do you change people's mind, minds when history can no longer be a fact? And this becomes a challenge. And I think this is a challenge for all the things you are. Playing GCHU and a white hat trying to benefit society, trying to benefit the world, bringing in more peace, reducing violence. How do you achieve that when violence has become so popular? Most people view it like a video game. All you have to do is look how popular uh, something like Fortnite is. Or Call of Duty. Or, you know, black. These two things are very popular. Yet they're all about violence.